in this particular video we're going to look at question to do with uh, stale evolution cosmology and also we shall look at um, hl diagrams so that you can be able to prepare for your exam so here i've uh, displayed uh, a representation of a uh, hl diagram so what you need to understand you have different regions you need to know different regions that uh, represent a hr diagram we have actually four main regions we have uh, a region where we have the white dwarfs and this type of stars are almost towards the end of evolution of uh, a star then we have also this main sequence where most of the stars are and currently the sun is in the main sequence stage we have this one where we which we call the red giants and finally we have the red super giant so different stars evolve in in such a way that uh, they can move from the main sequence to the red giants and then they move to the white dwarfs which later cools down to become black dwarfs but there are other stars which are those stars which have mass greater than that of the sun they move from the main sequence to the red super giants then which now move later to the supernova and a supernova is uh, an exploding star uh, then which becomes either uh, becomes a neutron star or a black hole right so we need to identify that uh, white dwarfs are very hot but they are less bright because their luminosity is less so white dwarfs these are hot uh, stars but they are less bright and they are less bright because they are small uh, in size then when we move to the main sequence these are stable stars in the sense that the inward force of gravity is equal to the outward force due to the forces that is uh, expansive forces that are is within from within the star so a star that is in the main sequence is actually stable then we need to look at also the red giants the red giants are um, cool and bright at the same time red super giant are cool stars but bright remember they they are big in size so they lose a lot of heat and then they are cool but due to their big size they look bright that's why you can see they are on the top part of the hl diagram i think we need now to also remember that uh, on the x-axis here we have color and on the y-axis we have what we call what what we call the luminosity so let us now talk about cosmology remember cosmology is a topic that deals with how the universe originated where did the uh, the universe it talks about the origin of the universe and according to the specification we are going to base our discussion on big bang theory so if you are asked a question to state and explain two evidences that support big bang theory you need to remember that the first evidence is uh, the presence of cosmic microwave background radiations which are everywhere and spreading or stretching in all direction they are stretching in all direction and they are everywhere and they might have been created during big bang and that is now that is why it um, it serves as an evidence the second evidence is um, the redshift that is observed of light observed from distant galaxies many galaxies display redshift which is an indication that all this um, the universe is actually which is an indication that the universe is expanding so this is an assertion that is what big bang theory claims so we are going to say that the redshift indicates that the universe is still expanding so that those two points serves as the evidence for big bang theory another part that you need ideally to prepare on is doppler equation the use of doppler equation how to do the calculation and that will enable to enable you to 
work out the speed at which a galaxy is moving away from the Earth. Now I want you to look at the scenario whereby we are told that a source, a source of light in a laboratory is found to have a spectral line of wavelength uh, 438. So don't be so much worried about this spectral line or what. The main idea there is the wavelength that you are told and that is going now to be our reference wavelength because we are looking at it from the lab in the uh, on earth then now the same line from a distant galaxy um, that is uh, the same light that is emitted from a distant uh, star uh, is found to have a wavelength of 6 or 8 nanometers that is nm nanometer means that's 10 raised to power negative 9 so we are supposed to calculate the speed at which the star is traveling away from earth now we are we are going to be given also the speed of light which is um actually three times 10 raised to power 8 meter per second so the, the the first thing we need to do here is to write the doppler equation change in wavelength over the reference wavelength uh, equals to the speed of a galaxy or a star over the speed of light then we can now work out the change in wavelength by subtracting the two wavelengths and we are going to get 170 nanometer which we are going now again to substitute into the formula and remember that uh, the this is going to be our reference uh, wavelength lambda naught and then 438 yes uh, v is the speed of the star and now times over 10 3 times 10 raised to power 8 which is the speed of light we make v the subject of the formula uh, so that we can be able to work out the speed at which the star is moving away from the earth so let us uh, try to work it out. We are going to get our answer is uh, one point. Let us use our calculator and try to see 1.16 times 10 raised to power 8 meter per second, which can be equally re be written as 1.16 times 10 raised to power 5 kilometer per second. I've just divided that answer uh, by 1000 so that I can be able to get in kilometer per second. So that is the speed at which the star is moving away from the Earth. And that is um, how to use the Doppler equation. Moving down, moving down, we have uh, further questions on uh, HR diagrams. I believe uh, you can also be asked a question in this manner. The figure below shows an incomplete HR diagram with um, different regions not real well labeled. But we have the middle one, which is quite diagonal, and that is very easy to identify. That is the main sequence whereby we have the sun. Then we have the region A and also the region B. So we need to identify what A represents. A, actually, if you look at it from the previous section that we looked at, that is um, the white dwarf. Here we have the white dwarf at that particular point, and we said these are hot stars but they are less bright because they are small and then down here we on the top we have red giants red giants and now i want you to write in the uh, comment section what is uh, x what does x represent yes just write that so that i can see whether we are together there's this particular part also we're supposed to label the missing part uh, of uh, the hl diagram axis so this one is a uh, color if you are given a question and you are told to identify is color i remember blue stars are hot but red and yellow stars are cool stars so uh, you need to remember that the next question here you are supposed to describe the stages of evolution of a star with mass similar to the sun when you are told to describe different stages of evolution of stars remember to check whether is it, is it similar to the sun or is it mass greater than that of the sun now in this one part c is similar to the sun so the first thing you need to to, to remember is that uh, um, when you are describing this stage you must uh, give details 
you must give details and also you must be chronological in a, a given nice and good order. So you start from protostar, you move to the main sequence, you move to the red giants, then you move later to the white dwarf, yeah, then which goes down to become a black dwarf. So let me just uh, briefly mention something to do with this. When you are writing this, already have done this question in the previous video. If you have not watched check, I've written all the stages uh, as the way they should be written in an exam. Now, gas and dust particles called the nebulae are pulled together due to gravity. And as they are being pulled together, temperature and pressure increases, and this results to the fusion of hydrogen and hydrogen nuclei. And in that way, heat is generated from within the star and it becomes a protostar. That star now, we, when it's at the protostar stage, the reactions increases, uh, enormous amount of heat increases, so there is an outward force that is generated. Now when the outward force equals to the force of gravity, the star now enters a stage which is known as the main sequence stage. In the main sequence stage, there fusion of hydrogen and hydrogen nuclei continues uh, which result to the formation of helium. So when hydrogen is used up, the star is going to run out of fuel and then it's going now the outward forces will be less then the star will collapse against or due to its, gra its gravity. So the size again shrinks, becomes small due to the compressive force, temperature and pressure increases. Then that star again, new reactions come up, which, we, which are fusion of helium and helium nuclei. Now a star again becomes alive so that the, this reaction of helium and helium nuclei result to enormous amount of uh, heat and temperature, which makes this star again to expand and become a red giant which cools down uh, because of the large surface area. From the red giant, the star now, the reaction of helium and helium continues until the helium nuclei are used up. Then that star again now is going, because it will run out of helium nuclei, it will cool down and become a white dwarf. The white dwarf will cool further to become a black dwarf. Now those are the steps that you need to describe there. Now let us move down to another section whereby we are told the H, the H, Hensprung russell diagram is a diagram used to by astronom astronomers to illustrate the properties of stars. Label the axis and use them to sketch hensprung russell diagram and your diagram should include the main sequence uh, red giants super giants and the white dwarfs so this is uh, just a walk in the park i believe uh, we can be able to do that here is color and at the top here we have luminosity and the luminosity is uh, actually tells about the amount of heat that is given out from uh, the surface of the star we say those at the top are bright, those that have low lumin luminosity, they are dim. And color, those that are blue towards the, z the, the where the axes are meeting, blue is towards that region where we have the axis meeting. And on the far end, on the actually on the right side of color, we are going to have cool stars. And now here, we're going to have the main sequence. Here we have the white dwarf and uh, these are the white dwarf main sequence the main sequence and then which are these what do you think okay that is the red giants or giants and further here on top of the giants or red giants we have super red super red giants which are very bright okay now Hmm. Already we have answered the Roman 2, where we have the white dwarf. 
and if you are told actually to indicate where we have the sun the sun is in the main sequence stage uh, now the next question here describe stages of evolution of a star with mass oh, i want the question now to be more than mass more than that of the sun uh, this question should be uh, you need to take that into consideration I, I think i need to make a change at that point yeah mass more than that of the sun okay so when that is happening when that is happening for a star whose mass is more than that of the sun uh, it starts from the protostar it moves to the main sequence it moves to the main sequence it moves to the red super giant it moves to the supernova which is an exploding star it moves to the neutron star and then finally it can come become a black hole so that is the stages for a star whose mass is more than that of the sun these are evolution stages of stars which are massive so which means at the protostar where this is the stage this is a young star after the nebula and dust particles have been pulled together by gravity then when the outward forces uh, increases and the balance with the force of gravity the star will move to the main sequence stage and at the main sequence stage, the, the star will continue fusing hydrogen and hydrogen until all the hydrogen nuclei are used up once that happens when all the hydrogen nucleus uh, are used up the star will run out of fuel and then it will collapse against its own gravity then that star again now temperature will increase because of the compression uh, force then the star again now will start fusing helium and helium nuclei which will result to enormous production of heat and then that star will expand to become a red super giant it will expand to a point that it's about to explode when this star is about to explode it becomes a stage which we call a supernova then that supernova is going to be explode to neutron star um, or it's going to become a black hole we've come to the end of uh, this short tutorial i believe uh, you found value from this consider subscribing uh, share this to your friends so that you can also benefit from the same i wish you all the best i know this is going to be your uh, kind of um, igcc o level question and uh, i believe you've uh, learned something from here don't forget to like this video and if there's something you've learned new from this uh, remember to leave a comment down below and also like this video all the best in your exams.